everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be talking about how to bring your corn snakes up out of formation and I'm going to be showing you uh, the adults that I brought out of formation that will hopefully breed this year. So please uh, subscribe if you haven't already and you really like corn snake content. I put out a corn snake video every single week and I try to make it as educational and fun as possible for you guys. Uh, we also have the ability to have memberships on this channel now. I just want to thank everyone who has become a member of this channel. Uh, you can do so by just clicking join underneath pretty much any video. Uh, or if you go to the main page of my YouTube channel, you can see the join button there. It's $2 and you guys get exclusive content. I just posted a video the other day of a brand new female that I got and I will be posting another video talking about the names that I decided to give all of the yearlings that I had put in a different video over the winter when I was doing some show off videos. So if you're interested in learning uh, all of the names for all of the yearlings uh, and you want to see some of these like exclusive content, including live videos, that will be available to you after the live is over. Um, just, you know, become a member. Like I said, it's $2. Uh, it, it really helps me out a lot. It helps me stay motivated to make the videos that you guys really like. Uh, and it's no pressure if you don't want to. I never expect anyone to spend money on me. Uh, just something that I want to mention if you do want that exclusive content. Uh, it doesn't change too much of the channel. Uh, everything that's educational will still be here for everybody. Uh, it's just a little extra thing here and there. So so uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the video. This is much less scripted than the other video, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, so bringing corn snakes out of brumation uh, doesn't require quite as much care as putting them into brumation. Bring, putting them into brumation, you need to make sure that you fast them for about three weeks, that you do a gradient of temperature from the typical like 80 to 85 degrees, then down to maybe like 70 degrees for a week, and then down to, of course, their 60 degrees, which is your brumating temperature, give or take. So uh, you want to make sure that you have a lot of pre-brumation care, but the post-brumation care is also important. You also want to make sure that they have that gradient coming back up. So you don't want to take them from the uh, recommended like 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit all the way back up to 85 degrees Fahrenheit because that really shocks their system. So you want to make sure that when you're bringing them back up out of brumation that you also have a bit of a gradient. So normally what I would do is raise the temperature of the brumating area itself. So I like to brumate at 50 degrees and no lower than 45 degrees. You can get down to 40, but I don't like to get down that low. Um, but I will then normally, when I start to bring them back up, for about a week prior to bringing them up, I will raise that temperature to 60 degrees. 65 degrees being the highest temperature for brumating corn snakes. Uh, so I usually bring it up to 60 degrees for a week prior to bringing them out and then I will bring them up. I have them in the garage. So when I say up and down, I pretty much just mean up and down the stairs because the snake room is upstairs uh, and then the garage is downstairs. Uh, so I bring them up out of the garage and into a sort of separate room and that stays at about 70 degrees. So they go from 50 degrees to 60 degrees in the brumation area and then they go up to about 70 degrees which is just our house temperature and then uh, they stay there for a week and then I put them in the 80 degree room, the snake room, for about a week and then they get their first meal. So they're out of brumation for two weeks technically, out of the garage for two weeks technically before they get their first meal. And that meal definitely needs to be a small one. Uh, you don't want to start out with something huge. You want to start out with something that's going to be maybe even half the size of a normal meal. I fed all of my adult corn snakes coming out of brumation small mice this year. So once you have them out and you feed them their small meal, uh, you want to make sure that everything's clean. You want to make sure that everything is good to go. You want to make sure they didn't lose very much weight. So uh, if you notice that there was any weight loss in brumation, any significant weight loss, um, I would say a significant weight loss. Like I didn't have, none of my snakes really lost weight this year. I think I had one that might have lost just like maybe like 10, 15 grams, but that was the most that any of my snakes lost in brumation. So if you have any adults that are losing like 50, 100 grams in brumation, that is a sign that there could be something wrong. You may have had a too high of temperature in brumating, so if you don't have a way to very consistently keep the temperature at 50 degrees or so, or at least under way, like under that 65, 
Um, it may have gone over 65 and it could be that their digestive systems continued to work and they lost weight because of that. Or it could be something worse. It could be some sort of parasite or it could even be some sort of other illness. So if you do notice any significant weight loss in brumation, definitely take your snake to the vet. I always recommend people take the snake to the vet if there is anything sort of out of the ordinary. Uh, but once you kind of realize that everything's fine with your snakes, uh, also like listen to their chest as they're breathing, make sure there's no popping or cracking or any other signs of a respiratory infection. Other signs of a respiratory infection could be um, drooling from the mouth or mucus coming from the nose or mouth. Uh, we talked about that a little bit in the Kathy Love book that I did a review on a few weeks ago. Uh, I highly recommend you check that out and leave a comment on that video if you want a chance to win that book uh, because I do a book giveaway every time that I do a review on the book I will give away the book in the next time that I do a book review so if you're interested in getting the corn snake manual by Kathy and Bill Love uh, leave a comment on that video and I will draw names out of a hat the next time that I do a book review which will be in a couple of weeks after you have determined that there is nothing wrong and everybody has taken a meal, uh, you can gradually increase their meal size, but normally they don't necessarily need it to be super gradual. It kind of depends on what their normal meal size is. Like I said, even my like largest corn snakes this year only got a small mouse and uh, even like the medium sized corn snakes also got a small mouse. So uh, I would probably uh, just give the smaller corn snakes their normal size meal, which is just a normal adult mouse size. And then the larger corn snakes, I would probably give them a little bit of a gradient because they are normally eating like day old chicks or maybe large like mice. So I will probably give them a gradient feed everybody a medium sized adult mouse next week. Keep all of the smaller adults on the medium sized mouse and then I can upgrade the larger adults to a larger size food item uh, the next week. So uh, you can kind of decide that, get a feel for how your snake is doing and the size of your snake and the size that of food that they normally eat. And that's pretty much it. After that, you're on a fast track to getting ready to breed. I will be doing a breeding uh, video uh, the next time I do one of these videos. So next month, I'm going to be doing a video on breeding. Uh, and then next week, actually, I'm going to be doing a morph deep dive on lava because uh, I asked some people in uh, some previous videos uh, if they would like either lava or ultra because those were the two I was going back and forth with and most people said lava so that's going to be next week's video. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put a clip on the end of this to um, show you guys all of the adults that I brought out of brumation because this is also half it's half a show off video and half an education video so I want to make sure that you guys get that show off side and I will be back at the end of that. So I was trying to figure out the best way to film this and I figured the best way to do it was probably just to turn on my camera in the snake room and show you guys the lighting in here is not obviously like on my face as much so like sorry about that but I'm going to start out with this girl that we just brought out of brumation. This is Miranda. She's an Ultramel Okatee from a Creamsicle line so that makes her a Creamsicle. Come here look at the camera girl. Maybe. Huh? So just so you can kind of see her pattern, I actually plan to put her with a Halo OPT snow male, the uh, nephew of my, the one that bred last year, who is the son of my original. So he's also like the grandson, I guess, of my original uh, Halo boy. You can see her colors a little bit better there. She's a very, very pretty girl. Um, she's het annery for sure. We know that I proved that out last year um, She needs a little bit more weight on her. Um, so we'll see how she does um, She's doing really good There's her overall body length She's got the length going on she just is not quite as girthy as I would like her to be for breeding but there you go. I was trying to get the camera to kind of focus on her, but it's not wanting to. Uh, so the hope is to breed her. We'll see how she does. They haven't had a meal yet since being out of brumation. So we'll weigh her after a few meals and see how she is when she sheds. But if she's ready to go, she would be breeding to a Okati Halo Snow boy. Just for reference, this is the boy. I don't know if you can really see his colors very well here, but you can see, hopefully, those really thick borders on him, um, even though the quality, the camera quality is not super great right now. 
Um, but yeah, you can see his borders. And he's he's a feisty boy, but um, he didn't brumate this year. He's not one that's coming up out of brumation. But since we're talking about potential breeding, this is the boy. I figured I'd show him to you. So this is my biggest girl. This is Empanada. And she is a classic Het Caramel Motley, possibly Het Golden, or I guess she's probably what you would consider a yellow jacket. Um, she's my biggest female. Looking real good there. She had kind of a rough shed during brumation, uh, so some of her color right behind her neck is a little faded. It'll probably come back and be closer to normal next time she sheds, but... There she is. Now, I plan to actually breed her to one of three males. I've been breeding her to her brother, Gelato, every single year since I got them, but um, I'm thinking I might pair her to a son this year, or uh, if everything goes as planned, I have another little male that um, is kind of part of a secret project that I might breed her to. We'll see. But there she is. Very big girl. Um, I hope to maybe get, I mean, obviously I hope to get Goldens, but we'll see. Um, so far, only caramels and motleys in the mix. She's not liking the way I'm holding her right now, so I'm going to put her back. So this is Gelato. This is the um, yellow jacket male that I would be, that I have been breeding her to. Um, he's a very sweet boy. I like him a lot. And uh, most of them didn't lose any weight in brumation, which is good. Like, maybe a minute amount, but um, none that, not, not an amount of weight that causes any kind of concern. So that's good. Oh, hi, hi buddy. <laughs> Up in my face. So there's Gelato. He's the sibling of Empanada. Um, he is also a classic or yellow jacket. He's very yellow in comparison to the average corn snake. Um, and he is possibly het golden, but he's also known to be het for caramel and motley. So um, if all else fails, he will probably be going to Empanada again this year. This is Frangapani. He is a Halo Snow. He is the, um, son of my original Halo Snow Prince and, um, the uncle of little Nectarine that I showed you earlier. I don't think I mentioned Nectarine's name, but his name is Nectarine. Um, and he is a breeder, obviously, breeder male. Um, and he has a lot more yellow, but his borders aren't quite as thick. I'm gonna see if I can get it to kind of focus. I don't know. <laughs> this room is kind of weird for that, but, um, I don't know who I'm gonna breed him to this year. I might not breed him this year. We don't know. Uh, I know that he's had for Caramel and Molly. If Nectarine does not breed to Miranda, I will breed him to Miranda instead. But I'm really, really hoping that Nectarine is ready to breed. Nectarine is two, so like, and he seems to be a good size. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, this this guy is my like go-to for breeding because I love producing halos. Very interested in my watch. Could be because I just held another snake not that long ago. Okay, whatever. <laughs> this guy's coloration is really hard to see. But he is very, very pink. Uh, he is an Ultramo Hypoberry Motley Annery. <laughs> That's kind of a lot. So he's he's Motley, even though he has some of these um, Paradox Checkers. He's Motley, and he has both Hypo and Strawberry. And he's also Red Factor. I can tell because he's pink. He's very, 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 very pink. You might be able not not be able to tell with this lighting, but. He is an uncomfortable snake. He does not enjoy human interaction at all. All right, let's try that. Not so much. <laughs> but he has Ultramel and Annery, Hypoberry, Motley. Uh, I don't remember if they said that he had any heads, but I'm hoping to breed him female that I bought last year that was sold to me as a ghost blood red Motley. Definitely not blood red but probably also not Ghost. I will show her in a few minutes. I'm just going down a uh, like, stack as I encounter them. So there he is. He's a sweet snake. He's just really, really uncomfortable with people and he requires a different kind of bedding from the rest of the snakes. Yeah, he's just super uncomfortable. Not very happy. He's never struck or bit me, but he just hates being handled. So I'm gonna put him back. So that last one, his name was Giovanni. This is Casanova, my male who decided to breed to everything that was in the same enclosure as him last year, 
which is why his name is Casanova, because he got the job done. With any female that would not, like, accept another male, they all went after him. He was also sold as a ghost blood red motley, which he was one that I thought might be, uh, but when he was bred to a known het diffused, there were absolutely no diffused babies. Um, and there was one ghost, so he might be a ghost. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think he is a ghost, but I don't know. I have no idea what he is. I actually bought him as a female, and he ended up obviously not being a female because he was breeding to his sister the day he arrived, and she was not ready to breed. So um, it was like an oopsie, but she's okay. She's actually at a different home now. Long story, but there he is, his pattern. He's a really sweet boy. Can't seem to get the camera to focus on him. I'm trying to see if I step out of the frame, but it doesn't really seem to be working. Anyway, um, I'll actually, I'll make sure to put pictures up on the screen for everybody to see what they actually look like with good photos taken, but there he is. I don't know what to breed him to. I know he's a Motley Het Stripe. I was going to breed him to uh, Francesca, which is um, the other female that I got his other sister, but um, I want to breed Francesca to a known um, visual hypo male, if possible. A known visual hypo male, so that's going to be Giovanni. It's the only male that I have that is known visual hypo type to see if she's hypo. And when we get to her, which she might be next, we'll see, um, you'll understand like why she's confusing. Yep, so Francesca was next. Um, if you look at her, at first glance, she looks, hold on, I'm trying to get the camera to focus on her instead of me. Um, if you look at her, she pretty much looks like a ghost Motley, um, but she's not. <laughs> she was bred to um, that het hypo boy, Casanova, and there were no hypos that came out. And I've had a few people tell me that she might be a dilute, like a blue Motley, um, and she's obviously not blood red. I don't know if you can tell, but she does have, like, pattern on her sides. Like, too much pattern to be a blood red. Uh, which is fine. At least she was a female. Her brother was sold to me as a female, and he was a boy in the wrong morph. So, at least you got the gender right on her. Um, so, she is a motley. She's also head stripe. Um, and she is whatever hypotype is happening here. She does have some yellow on her neck, which is typical of anneries. Uh, typical of ghosts, like any, any anery type, really. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure what she is. But um, I want to, even though she and Casanova are both het stripes, and that would be the only way I get stripes this year, to me it's more important to prove out her genetics than it is to like get stripes again. Like I don't love stripes that much, so I'm not attached to the concept of getting stripes. So there she is. Uh, she's another one that needs to put on a little bit more weight, so we'll see how she does. But. Um, if she does okay over the next couple weeks, then yeah, we plan to breed her to Giovanni. And last but not least on the breeders that we will have this year is my green blotch snow female. Uh, she's definitely got some nice chonk on her. Uh, I actually am kind of probably going to put her on a diet. I was sort of hoping that she would uh, lose a little bit of that chonk in brumation, but that's not how brumation works, I know. So she is going to go on a diet. She's one of those that like... She didn't get long, she just got fat. Uh, she doesn't really have like hips yet, uh, but she's a little chunky, so we want to make sure that she's healthy for eggies. Um, so even though she's not very long, like she barely hits that three foot mark, um, she's like this is her adult size. She's a 2017. Some snakes just get a little bit bigger than others, and her whole line, my whole halo line, none of those snakes really get very big, so. Uh, it's pretty typical. Her mom was about this size, uh, her dad was about this size, so it just is what it is. Uh, and obviously she's very pretty and very green and very patient with me. She's a very sweet girl. Her name is Marigold, and I love her. She's probably one of my favorite females, just because of her personality. She's so sweet and so docile. I hatched her here in 2017. Um, so yeah, those are all of the, like, known ones that I want to try to breed this year. Um, the, I don't have too many like up-and-comers this year. I do have an Amil mask male that is technically, like could be ready to breed. He's two years old. 
and then he's had for sun kissed and charcoal and a bunch of stuff so he's gonna go into my flare line but I'm not breeding uh, any snakes in my flare line this year which is super weird to say there's a few other snakes I have that just aren't gonna breed this year um, I have I have a couple of retired females um, one of them is another ultramel oak tea that I'm not gonna breed one of them that's taking a break this year is emerald the ultramel that's het for caramel motley and lavender so she's taking a break but yeah, there's, there's these sort of breeding plans and the snakes that I brought up out of brumation and um, except for Nectarine. I didn't bring Nectarine out of brumation. He's just been a young growing boy, but since I definitely plan to try to breed him, um, he is actually her son from 2017, when, or not 2017, I'm sorry, she's a 2017, from 2020 when I bred her to a normal snow. And I actually, breeding her to a normal snow amazingly got me like the best looking halo so far. So very excited about that. Very excited about breeding Nectarine finally because he is, he is a looker. Like I wish that I had a good enough camera to get a picture and I, and I might try, but um, anyway, so there they are. Going back to other Sarah. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, please subscribe. It means so much to me and to the channel and to help the channel grow and help our community grow. And uh, remember, you can become a member. And I also have a website where you can buy snakes. You can buy t-shirts with snakes on them. You can buy masks with snakes on them. You can buy a lot of things on my website. I even also have a couple of books that I wrote. And remember, if you did get a copy of the very first edition of my very first book, you get the second edition for free. That's only good until March first so get it while you can if you got the first one you can get the second one for free using the code that was sent to you if you did not get a code send me an email I'll have the email in the description and we can work something out for you uh, thank you again so much for watching I'll see you next week for our lava video